All right, Jay, before we wrap it up and put a bow on it, let's venture to the NBA. And I got to tell you this. This, um, I won't say it's a new show, but the new setup on ESPN NBA Today. Yeah. With Malika Andrews and uh, the panelists of everybody. Yeah, the panelists of everybody. You know, what you want in a show, whether it's NBA, NFL, whatever it is, is after watching that show, I should want to watch a game from that sport. Yeah. This is a really good show. I was watching it earlier today. And just with the topics and just the presentation of the show, I'm like, dang, I'm ready for some NBA tonight. It's a really good show. So speaking of which, in the NBA, uh, it's been an interesting season so far. We're two weeks into it. Um, I've enjoyed it. I imagine many of you have as well. And we've seen some surprises as far as how certain teams have performed thus far in the NBA season. You have four teams at 5-1 and one in the Eastern Conference and two teams at 5-1 and one in the Western Conference. In the East, you have the Knicks, you have the Bulls, the Heat, and the <laughs> Wizards at 5-1 and one of all teams. And in the West, you have the Warriors and the Jazz at five and one as well so with those two between those two conferences just between those those six teams is it fair or unfair to say that one or more of these teams will end up as a top two seed in their conference oh it's fair i think it's 100 percent fair i i have utah leading the west they are the, they are the perfect regular season team because mm-hmm. it seems like it's the only thing they care about because mm-hmm. then you just scheme Rudy Gobert <laughs> off the court and they, you, and they lose um, especially in the playoffs mm-hmm. but I do see the Jazz as getting a one or two seed honestly I can see Golden State maintaining this because they're getting healthy Clay's coming they'll even be more healthy they'll, they'll look even more ridiculous but on the East I, I think it's fair as well mm-hmm. Miami I told y'all Miami two years ago when they went to the finals mm-hmm. The next year, they were really bad. And I think the reason they were bad was similar to why the Lakers and a lot of the other teams that went deep into the playoffs were bad. They were exhausted. They didn't. They, the season did not end. The human body has limits, and they hit those limits. They got that rest. What little, Well, they got a lot of rest because they, the, they didn't make the playoffs. Mm. Now they're back on it. Adding Kyle Lowry was easy because they are just a hustle grind team in general. Mm. Adding him with Bam Adebayo and a healthy Jimmy Butler. Bro. I think Miami might um Miami's gonna give Milwaukee problems again. Mm-hmm. Just put it like that. And right now Milwaukee's three and four, and I ain't gonna make the playoffs. Yikes. Yeah, they have they haven't won a home game this year, Milwaukee. Oh god. Too much champagne still on the court. Um, oh boy. I hate it when we completely agree. Because yeah, it I is like, okay, where do we go from here? But yeah, I completely agree. Jazz, like you said, totally built for the regular season. They love it. It's their baby. It makes them feel it's good their championship. about themselves. It's their championship. It makes them feel good about themselves. <clears throat> and then the inevitable happens. Then they activate the, <laughs> the Rudy Gobert button <laughs> game plan. And then it's all over. So you have that. And uh, the Heat as well. I think, for me, the Heat, they're one of the best defensive teams. And they, they really have been. Because when you're on a team with Jimmy Butler, that's pretty much what you have to be in order to be at his level. But I think they're one of the best defensive teams in the East as well. They were two, they were two years ago in the yeah, bubble. Okay, exactly, yeah, that's, exactly. that's who they are. They're a defensive squad. Uh-huh. And they're, they're very focused. They play hard. They don't beat themselves. <laughs> I mean, if they continue to play this way, I mean, forget pushing Milwaukee. They can beat Milwaukee playing this way. I think they can beat Brooklyn too. And you know what? You know who they need to beat? The Heat, they need to be the Rams of the NBA in the sense that we really like where we're at. We don't necessarily need any more than what we've got, but if we get a little bit more, that just makes us even more dangerous. That just makes things even better. Yeah. So the the question is who can they trade for or acquire mm -hmm. and free uh, as a unrestricted free agent. that's going to want it off their team who they can, they go yank whoever it is. Pat Riley will find them. That's true. That's what he, that's what he's always been an aggressive GM. And that's part of the reason why they have the, the championships that they have. So yeah, I agree with those two. Um, I don't think the Knicks or the Wizards are going to be there. Wizards, they're playing with a lot of chips on their shoulder, just from oh, yeah. the L.A. trade and such. But it's good for them because they got to keep Bradley Beal there if they want to be a viable franchise. With the Knicks, I didn't believe in them when we did the preview show. I think that they're going to fall. I mean, obviously, they're still going to be a playoff team. So I did underestimate them somewhat. Yeah. So I could see them falling to five or six. Playing hard every night in defense gets you at least no no far, no far further than six seed. Yeah. But this Bulls team, and I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch this Bulls team play all the way through. Billy Donovan, as their coach, does bother me, but there's nothing not to like about their starting roster, which we've talked about before. So I could see the Bulls team really pushing that as well. The Warriors, I feel like they're still a bit too step dependent. I mean, that's a big part of the reason why you ha- there's so much value in Clay Thompson. And Jordan Poole, he's done a good job filling in for Clay, but yeah. I mean, there's only one Clay. He's not Clay, right? right. So I think that they're going to fall a little bit as well because there's so much on Steph Curry's shoulders 
well, I mean, Steph Curry and Draymond, but more so on the offensive end, Steph Curry to truly be that engine. So they'll fall some. They're still going to be in the playoffs. I think I picked them to go to the Western Conference Finals against did. the Lakers. I have to look up. But yeah, yeah against the Lakers, something like that. But yeah, but Jazz definitely. They, it's, it's almost like, too, besides the Rudy Gobert playing in the playoffs, their defense is not as good in the playoffs either because that's a big part of what they live by in the regular season is that stifling defense. But it's it's not as good in the playoffs for some reason. It's because everybody gets him off the court. I mean, you can scheme around to Gordy Gobert, and a yep. lot of teams don't show their cards mm-hmm. in the season. Right. They'll right. go out there and play. They'll let Stifle Tower do his thing. He'll mm-hmm. go in defensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. Woo-woo. <laughs> they have him converse about him in the, as an MVP. Oh, man, yep. he should win MVP. It's nothing about what he does should be MVP. He should mm-hmm. remain as a top defender. Mm-hmm. But teams prepare themselves for what they know they're going to get out of him. Start scheming, bring him out, force mm-hmm. him out, and then what I'm surprised is nobody's went up and just tried to start yamming on him. I, I'm waiting for somebody to just try to dunk on him all the time and uh, and really just 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 make it happen. But See, okay. yeah, why don't the Jazz get proactive? If you know that in the playoffs they're going to space the floor, they're going to move Rudy Gobert out. Why don't you go get another five who you would put in who can actually who can actually shoot the ball? Right? Why, why don't you do that in order to offset that? That's a good question. Right. Because, I mean, the time to be aggressive is not later. The time to be aggressive is right now. If you really want to win a championship, like you said, if that franchise and their ownership is perfectly fine where where things at, where where things are financially because they're really good in the regular season, then don't do anything. I mean, just get what you normally get and you'll be perfectly fine. But if they really want to compete for a championship in a Western Conference that isn't going to be settled all season long because just about anybody can beat anybody in the right matchup, I think they need to get aggressive too. That's what it's going to come down to. Who are going to be the aggressive teams in the NBA early instead of later? Yeah, that's true. That, that that's probably the biggest issue. Is the question is who's going to who's going to, who's going to make a move mm-hmm. right at the trade deadline to start shifting things around. I do like seeing that the Wizards are out there hooping and I love it, looking happy. And you know and what? And I was telling carefree. Chris, I was telling this to Chris at the barbershop. <laughs> we've we've talked about you know how he feels about Russell Westbrook. So we've talked about how they could have had Buddy Hill over Russell Westbrook and what the consequences are of that. But just think about this. And I hated this because I love Trez Harrell and the way he was treated by the Lakers, I thought was, was terrible as far as how they played him. If you had Trez Harrell at the five, AD at the four, Kuzma at the three, Brown is your point guard and who the F ever is your shooting guard. Who can contend with that lineup that they would have had or that they should have been using last season? I think Trez, didn't Trez regress last year? He didn't get any playing time. He never time enough to get into a rhythm. I think that was probably why he just wasn't very good in play out in, 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 in practice he's, or in the games he he's did play. He's a monster play. right now. He's back to being old Tress. He is. He is. I, I think he's better in situations where he can, where he can get the ball in his hands. That's the one thing about playing with a player like LeBron or mm-hmm. even like Anthony Davis. The ball has to go through them, and mm-hmm. that kind of throws a lot of things off. Um, ball centric guys like him. Makes it tough for you to play. Westbrook is ball centric, but Westbrook also gets rid of the ball and passes, passes, gives passes up all the time. Mm. He usually turns the ball over himself when he, he's going on drives <laughs> on his own. Mm-mm. But for the most part, he dishes the rock. He gives it away. So yeah. that's your difference. And at the same time, this gives Bron opportunity to take some some games off. He can actually rest himself, mm-hmm. and then Westbrook can go out there and just be buck wild and go 110 like he always does because mm-hmm. they needed another playmaker. And they didn't have another playmaker with any of those other guys. Mm-hmm. Kuzma got to play basketball with them. It, it was just weird mustache, but it was weird. So, yeah. We'll see. But out of those six, I'm totally with Utah getting there. I think Golden State possibly can, and I am sold on Miami. Me too. I'm, I am definitely sold on the Bulls. The baby Bulls are no longer the baby Bulls. <laughs> I like what they're doing. Yeah. Can't wait to talk more NBA later in the season. Mm-hmm. Not right now. There ain't no reason to talk about them right now because we're in football season and all of that. So-